I see 220 problem number 3 involves an upward direct electric field through a circle. Uh, the electric field is increasing, and we're supposed to find the magnetic field on the circle. So it's that idea that a changing electric field produces a magnetic field. I hope I said magnetic field before. Let's draw a picture of it. There we go. Pop that in there. Um, this is the increasing electric field. Call it increasing E on the inside, where it's increasing at the rate delta E by delta T. So our rate of change of E is 2.10. Newtons per coulomb per second. So the uh, electric field has units of kilonewtons per coulomb, and the rate of change of it is going to have units of kilonewtons per coulomb second. And then uh, we get the, the radius of the circle is given, call it R, and uh, R is equal to 0 0.06 meters, 0 0.0600 0 0 meters. Okay, what we need to use is uh, the equation that uh, represents the concept that a changing electric field causes a magnetic field, and that's B is equal to mu zero, epsilon zero, two universal constants, uh, magnetic and electric permittivity of free space. And that's all divided by 2 pi r times the rate of change of the electric flux. So that's a subscript E there. This is electric flux, rate of change of it where uh, this is good for a uh, an electric field that is changing and is uh, has a uh, it's uniform and it's also within a circle so this will be uh, the flux through the circle number essentially the number of field lines through that circle and it's expressed as the area of the circle times the electric field that'll be the flux and how fast that's changing governs how big the magnetic field gets to be. Um, let's go ahead and write down what we mean by the flux epsilon zero over two pi r times it's the rate of change of a times e. Now the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared and it's a constant so I can factor it out. A times delta E by delta T. And the area itself is given as pi r squared, where r is the radius of that circle. So B can be expressed as mu zero epsilon zero over two pi r times pi r squared, the area of the circle, times the rate of change of the electric field where it exists in that circle. Let's see these uh, pi's will cancel out. Uh, one of the r's cancels out upstairs with the r that's in the denominator. And we're left with uh, one half. Here's the two that's in the denominator. Mu zero, epsilon zero, r times the rate of change of the electric field, delta E by delta T. Substituting values with units, we obtain B is one half. U zero is uh, four pi times ten to the minus seventh tesla meters per ampere.
times epsilon zero, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th. Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared, and then times the point zero six zero zero meters for R and uh, delta E by delta T was 2.10 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, newtons per coulomb second. And if we evaluate that, we get 7.01 times 10 to the minus 16th. It should work out to Tesla. But uh, let's go ahead and check that. I got uh, Tesla meters per ampere times coulombs squared per Newton meters squared times meters times Newtons per coulomb seconds. Okay, one of the coulombs cancels out. One of the newtons, well, the newtons cancel out. Um, I got meters squared up top, canceling out meters squared on the bottom. So meters times meters canceling out the meters there. And then I got a coulomb per second divided by amperes. A coulomb per second is itself an ampere. So, uh, this coulomb per second here cancels out the ampere in the denominator there, and indeed I am left with Tesla. So uh, B comes out to be, the magnetic field comes out to be 7.01 times 10 to the minus 16th Tesla. And then uh, we are supposed to give the direction. Let's see if E is increasing, you point your thumb. Uh, we use the, the right hand rule for something curly, something straight. Point your thumb in the direction of the change of E, which would be out of the board because E, or out of the page, out of the screen here, because E is both out of the screen towards us and it's increasing. So that'll be the direction in which you point the thumb, and the fingers will curl around in a counterclockwise direction. So uh, we can say. Uh, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, as viewed from above. Always have to state the viewpoint when you're using that expression, clockwise or counterclockwise. So we get 7.01 times 10 to the minus 16th.